Good afternoon, YouTubers. I got another video for you guys today. Uh, it's another project I was working on for the last couple of days. Uh, about a month ago, I had an idea to try to grow an avocado tree inside one of the Dutch buckets. But then I was thinking, well, if it's a tree, the roots are going to be too big and it will just clog up the Dutch bucket system. So I thought of creating a large Dutch bucket system using 55 gallon drums. Um, so today I actually finished building that and I have it up and running so I'm going to share that with you guys right now. I built three 55 gallon uh, Dutch buckets and then incorporated those into my five gallon Dutch bucket system so that I could grow avocado trees. Now, I haven't placed the trees in the net cups yet, the five gallon net cups I should say that I made. But without further ado, here we go. So as you can see, they're just like the normal Dutch bucket setup with the five gallons. Only instead of five gallons, I'm using 55 gallon drums. Uh, they're all food safe. I think they had uh, Dr. Pepper syrup in them, so they smell really good. And here is one of the drip lines that I got going in there. As you can see, this is just a five gallon bucket. And you can pull these puppies right out. There's no reason to do that right now. But anyways, there's all three of them. And then I just have a half inch inlet that I teed into the main uh, feeder line for the Dutch bucket system. And at first I wasn't thought, sure it was gonna have enough power or pressure to pump up here, but it did it no problem. Then I have these sitting on cinder blocks. And I leveled them out using a level. Well, actually they're not level. I made it so that this one on this side is higher than the other ones. So that the water will drain down into the reservoir tank over there. And then I just used some tie string and drilled two holes up here. And this just attaches around the drain for now until I come up with something else. So that seemed to work for, for what I have. And then I used for drains on there instead of half inch, these are uh, three quarter inch PVC drains with an elbow and then about a two inch piece that I cut at the bottom down here so that it fits inside the tube for the drain. And so far it's working just fine. I'll let it run for a couple of days and uh, see what happens, see if the water temperature goes up or not. Um, I covered all the, I covered these up with uh, white plastic and then it's black on the other side. It's called Panda Plastic. They sell it on Amazon, so in the winter time you can use the black side to keep the containers warm. Or now in the summer I can use the white side to keep them cooler. But that's what I'm going to grow my avocados in, avocado trees. And while we're over here, I guess we can look at the five gallon dust buckets and see the progress of the plants. Here's one of the, here's the eggplant that I planted. It's doing pretty good. Here's one of the grapes. Uh, it doesn't look like it has any new growth, but if you peek down there underneath, there's a whole bunch of new leaves right there. Those are all new. And then this grape, it has a bunch of new leaves on it. Even uh, It has even more new growth. All this up here is brand new. This whole branch right here is brand new. And then the blueberry. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say about the blueberry. It doesn't really look like it's doing anything, but we'll leave it be and see if uh, it, maybe it just takes longer. And the blackberry, all the stuff on top died off, and then we got a whole new branch right here of new growth. So those are doing all right. And back here we've got the tomatoes. They're doing well. This one, uh, the leaves are rolling up on it, so that's it's either it's shading its photosensitive cells from the sun because there's too much sun, or it's reacting to too much water. I know certain types of tomatoes don't like to be overwatered, and this one might be one of those varieties. Because over here, there's another variety of tomato, and it's not doing that at all. There's no leaf curling anywhere at all. But we do have a lot of fruit. Uh, they're getting pretty big, actually. And there's some more up here at the top, and then at the very top, and then more flowers up here. And then this tiny one here, this one's uh, it's still cooking. 
you can hear the crunchy of the leaves. The lower leaves are still cooking on it, so this one might not make it. I might take a sucker off of this one and put it over here and that and take uh, take the place of this one. But it does this one does have fruit on it, so we're gonna wait and see. I'm gonna go down here and check out the tiny Tim's tomato. It's actually grown quite a bit since the last time I did a video. And then uh, over here we've got uh, pole beans. That's about a foot and a half tall climbing up this string that I got here. And there's my reservoir tank. And as you can see the pump right here. And I put a painter's bag around the pump so that if debris falls in there it doesn't get sucked into the pump and then clog up the emitters and cause an issue later on. And then, uh, if you guys are curious as to what nutrients I'm using, um, following, uh, I'm using what MHP Gardener uses. I found the company that makes the Master Blend for 1838, and it was, uh, I think, fifty dollars for 25 pounds, and then a twenty-five dollar shipping to have it shipped here. And then, of course, you need to supplement calcium nitrate. And then on Amazon, you can get a 25-pound bag of calcium nitrate for $29.99, free shipping. And same with the uh, Epsom salts. It's $34.99 with free shipping. And I use uh, 12 grams of the Master Blend per 5 gallons of water. And then 12 grams of calcium nitrate per 5 gallons of water. And then 6 grams of Epsom salt per five gallons of water, and that's the formula I use. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see some more videos. But that's what I got for you guys today, so have a good day and enjoy your week.